How are you doing? Uh, so this is talk about Mobix. Uh, my name is Adam Klein, I'm the CEO and co-founder of 500 Tech. Uh, before I talk about Mobix, I want to talk about Nier. You probably noticed that Nier works for uh, 500 Tech. And I'm the CEO. And you probably also noticed that Nier made a joke about uh, Mobix in his quiz on my behalf. So for all of you who are uh, recruiting, Nier is also uh, looking for a job, <laughs> starting now. <laughs> He's a pretty decent developer. So uh, uh, before, usually when I do a talk about Mobix, I explain what it is and go into, into the internals. And then I speak about Mobix versus Redux. So I decided to do the opposite. Because usually when I start talking about uh, Mobix, people think in their head, why do you need it? Like we have Redux. Uh, so I just want to quote Dan Abram of the creator of Redux. Uh, he tweeted awesome stuff about Mobix in uh, September, uh, March 2016, and uh, half a year later, he tweeted, you might not need Redux. So that's an uh, interesting point. But to be serious, what he meant was, uh, a lot of people say, like, Redux is so much boilerplate. Like, you just want to change one property. Why do you need an action creator and an action and a reducer and a middleware and immutable data? And what people usually say is, yeah, but Redux gives you structure and it's, it's much uh, uh, harder to make mistakes when uh, you use Redux because it gives you architecture. Well, in fact, that's not true. Like you can build really crappy code base with Redux if you don't know what you're doing. And, and what Dan Abramov said is, uh, you should use Redux. Redux comes with a lot of boilerplate, but it also gives you so many things like serializing your data, loading it from local storage, time traveling, etc. And so you should, know, you should know that all of these come with Redux, and if you want to use it, this is what you get from it. Okay, so uh, this is Michel, he created the uh, Mobix, and uh, he says that people use it as an alternative to Redux, and you should know that it's just a library. Uh, it has no concept of a store, it has no concept of data flow, it has no concept of uh, some kind of architecture paradigm, it's a library, and uh, which means that when you use it you have to think, which is not such a bad thing, you should find out. Um, it could be a dangerous thing, but if you use it wisely, it will do very good for your uh, code base. So. Um, we're going to get to the actual internals of Mobix, but all of these uh, advantages of Redux um, can be used in a library that is built upon Mobix, and it is more opinionated, and it's called Mobix State Tree. And it gives you everything that uh, you can get from Redux, like uh, serialization of the state, uh, time traveling, and all of these uh, cool things. So some facts about Mobix, um, it's very popular and uh, a lot of companies use it. It's, it has a lot of uh, teaching material on uh, the internet. It's used by a lot of large scale applications and companies. And okay, so what is Mobix? So uh, it's a tool for making objects reactive. It's really simple. Let's take a plain object. It's a class with an email property and a function to mutate the email. Uh, what does it mean, reactive? Reactive means that uh, if the model changes, we want to do something. Let's say we want to update an input. So first we update the value of the input with the value of the model, and we change the model, and now we have to update the input again. And now we change the value of the model again, so we have to manually update the value of the input. This is not reactive, this is manual. How can we do it automatic with Mobix? In Mobix, you have a function called autorun. You basically just wrap the side effect, the reaction function, in an autorun callback. And then it will automatically run whenever it needs to be run again. It looks like magic. Uh, there's one thing that's missing, is that to tell Mobix which properties it needs to observe. And we do it by decorating our regular uh, object, no crazy immutable data things, reducers, middlewares, 
And you just add a decorator called observable to the property. Uh, this is not observable from RxJS. It's just the same name. It's a completely different thing. And then Mobix knows uh, it, it actually wraps this property with a getter function and a setter function. So it knows exactly when you access that property. So that's what happens under the hood. So the first time you call autorun, Mobix creates, this is like the internals of Mobix. Uh, it creates a, an object called reaction. It gives it some name. And then it runs the callback function of the autorun. And now when you use a va an observable value, Mobix knows about it because it replaces it with a getter and a setter function. So it says, OK, this reaction uh, depends upon this observable. So it builds this dependency tree. And then every time you set a new value, let's say for the email uh, property, Mobix also knows about it and it checks all the dependency trees and then it knows, it looks for the reaction and it knows to rerun the reaction. So basically, Mobix is pretty much the only state management tool or reactive tool that automatically knows, like, has intimate knowledge of your app. It knows what depends on what, and it can update it uh, very performantly. It also handles uh, duplicate states. So let's say you have a validity flag on your class, on your model, which says if the email is valid or not. Basically, if you keep this as, as state, then you duplicate the state because you can infer the validity of the email from the actual value of the email. So we handle this in Mobix in a, a way that's very uh, similar to the other one, to the reaction. We use something called computed from Mobix and it acts the same as the other one, but it also caches the value. So the first time you call is valid, Mobix will run this function. It will calculate um, the validity of the email and then it will cache the value. Then every time you call this function, it will return the same value. So this makes uh, the applications very performant out of the box. And whenever you change the email, it has the same dependency tree mechanism. It will recalculate the is valid. ASIC operations is a, a, a very difficult thing to achieve with uh, Redux. And uh, in Mobix is pretty straightforward. You just do some something async and when it returns you change you mutate the data and when you mutate the data mobix will operate synchronously so there's not there's nothing really special about this um, this is react nyc so what what does it have to be, do with react in react you don't update uh, values of inputs directly right you render components and usually when you have a large application, you don't have all of the state inside your components. You have some kind of state management, some kind of store that holds state that needs to be shared between components. So these components <coughs> need to re-render whenever this uh, state changes. Um, so let's take an um, imaginary component. It uses some uh, values or computed values from the model. In order to make this component reactive, to react automatically to the changes in the model, all you need to do is add the observer decorator. And that's it. How, how it works internally, you can go into Mobix source code. It's not that complicated. Basically, it, it uh, like re-implements the render function, and then it can automatically know which observables you used inside the render function, and it uh, forces the re-render whenever <coughs> they change. So it's, it's very straightforward, it's very simple. This is all you need to know about like basic of Mobix. The API is super slim. And once you get to know like how it works internally, then the magic also like disappears and you can debug it better. So this is like a very simple example. And a lot of times, you know, uh, to do apps, they look really simple. But when it gets to a large application, then you know, then you have different uh, kind of uh, challenges. Uh, so what I want to show you is uh, an app. It's also a demo app, but it, I can demonstrate a few more complicated things with it. So it's some kind of shop uh, shopping uh, cart. Um, oh, I'm missing an image. So you can buy. Uh, you can buy things whenever I click, 
this component also with the shopping cart uh, loads. I can also toggle it from here. So I can change the quantity from here and also from here. I can uh, remove items and I get com like computed values which are the total of each item and the total of the entire cart. So you can already see why you need like state management even in this small application because a lot of components share the same data. I can also filter. So how do I go about in constructing this with uh, Mobix? So the first thing I'm going to show you is what stores I have here. So the first store is just raw data of the products. And one thing to notice here so there's just one observable property here called items. Uh, one thing to notice is that it's not an array, it's a dictionary keyed by the ID, which makes it uh, easy to look for a specific product by ID. That's also a common practice in Redux. And the next uh, store is the cart store, which is this one. It also has uh, uh, items. And these items will actually say what, what I have in my cart, but they, should, they need to somehow refer to the product store because I don't want to save the same data inside the, the cart. So the first thing to notice here is that I'm using a map. Uh, who knows what JavaScript map is? So it's basically a, a dictionary and it's ma it makes it easier for Mobix to track uh, objects with dynamic keys. Okay, so in this, let's say, cart, it only has the items property. It's not dynamic. But the items property has, uh, it will be keyed by the ID of the item. It will also be like a normalized state. So uh, when you use the map, you use set, a method, and get, and delete. It makes it easier for Mobix to track it. Uh, that's the, th the first thing to notice. And the second thing is that each item inside this map let's say in the add item method, um, I wrap the, the object with another class, which is called cart item, which is here. So it's very object oriented, everything is encapsulated. And every cart item holds a quantity, like how many of this item and which product. Now, because it's object oriented, a lot of people have a tendency to keep an actual reference to the product, from the product store. The problem is this, uh, with this is that sometimes you refresh the data from the server and then your, all of your references will be broken. So what I recommend to do is only keep the ID of the product and then when I want to get the actual product for its price, its image, its title, it's actually a computed property uh, which uses the product store and tells it, okay, Give me the product with this ID. ID. And be because it's a computed property, it will only recalculate whenever it, it actually changes, which is very good. Um, okay, so, uh, so we have some kind of store hierarchy. Okay, this is one of the first things people say, like in Redux you have just one store. In Mobix, if you have a lot of stores, it will be a mess. So, you just do the same thing you do in uh, Redux. You have separate stores, you normalize and flatten the state. And you have computed values, which if you do advanced Redux, you, or it's actually basic Redux, you have selectors, which can select from different stores. So it's pretty much, or different reducers, it's pretty much the same thing. So you need to keep some kind of hierarchy of stores. So I would say that the product store is more low level. It's just raw data. It has no dependencies. And the cart store, uh, it, it knows about the product store. Uh, one more thing that I did here was uh, to, um, to do automatic persisting to local storage. So if I, I have like two items in my cart, if I refresh, um, I still have two items in my cart. And it's all persisted automatically to local storage. This is also very easy to accomplish. So in my constructor, um, I just run inside an auto-run function. I just save the items to local storage. I'm using a utility from uh, Mobix called 2.js, which takes the objects and just serializes them to plain uh, JavaScript. 
And that's it, because it's inside an auto run, it will persist uh, this cart to local storage every time you do any sort of change. Now, that can be uh, not performant, because every time you uh, do some change, it will save to local storage. So Mobix comes out of the box with a few cool things, like uh, debouncing. So let's say I do uh, two seconds uh, debounce which means I can do a lot of changes and only after two seconds it will be saved in local storage. And you can also name your uh, uh, reactions to get uh, good uh, debugging. Speaking about debugging, uh, Chrome extension, I can see all of my components and I can actually explore, I don't know if you see it, it's too small, uh, I can actually explore the dependencies of this of these components, so I can know. Okay, this component, what what if I change uh, something, what will it affect? So I can see. Okay, this component, which is uh, the shopping bag, it relies on the cart dot count, which is a computed value, and I can also go inside and see that this depends on the items array of the cart. So you can really go into the internals of your application. Uh, you also have the changes uh, log. So let's say I add a new item. I can see I have the add item action and the open cart action. And I can also see which components did the re-render. And also this reaction, which is the persist to local storage, I gave it a name. That's why I see it here in the debug, debug window. So also it's really easy to, to get a glimpse of what's going on inside your app. And I think the last thing I want to show you is uh, you have a, me a method from Mobix called trace, which tells you basically why, why this, this reaction run. Like sometimes you, you have these reactions that run and you didn't plan for them to run and you want to know why. So whenever I... Uh, Call trace, it tells me persist is invalidated due to a change in cart item 5 dot quantity. So it tells me, okay, this is why I reran this reaction. So you can actually do very good debugging. Time for some shameless promotion. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm from uh, 500 Tech. So uh, we do uh, web development, consulting and training. Basically, we help uh, companies ramp up their technology stack. Um, it can be performance, optimizations, uh, migrating from uh, an older technology uh, to, let's say, React. Um, ramp up your build process with Webpack, etc. And we also do trainings, so like full-on courses. Uh, you can go to 500tech.com, check out uh, some cool projects that we built. Uh, these are some of our clients. These are us. Uh, we also run meetups and like this one and uh, conferences. Uh, write books, open source, do all sorts of, uh, of fun stuff that uh, don't give us any money. And that's it. Uh, so I invite you to go to the website and say, hi, Adam. Great talk! <laughs> and your email and send. <laughs> We're always open to, to uh, good people with uh, good vibes and good skills. The question is why don't I use WebStorm? <laughs> well, actually, um, I switch a lot between projects and it's just super fast with uh, VS Code. And with WebStorm, it takes uh, some time, and I'm a freak of productivity. I also know all the shortcuts of Gmail by heart. So you see me just typing, I'm on Gmail. And that's it. Yeah, WebStorm is great. So the question was, uh, what's the startup time and performance of Mobix? Because it does a lot of like wrapping and dependencies. So it's really hard to compare, because in some use cases, Mobix is like much faster, and some uh, use cases, Redux is faster. Both of them are extremely fast, and uh, it does things very, uh, in a very performant uh, manner. In Mobix 5, they're using uh, proxies, 
Uh, so they're doing a really good job. It's already version five, so it's uh, it's good. <laughs> so the question was uh, in Angular, you have uh, two-way binding, and uh, which creates a lot of mess. And how does Mobix solve this, or does Mobix uh, use two-way binding? So basically, Mobix has nothing to do with uh, two-way binding, and so. I said that Mobix doesn't come with a dat data flow, but you should still think in a flux way that if you update, if you uh, take a value from an input, you call an action, and that's it, you forget about it. And then when you use the, the value, you take it from the state. So you don't, you don't need and you shouldn't do two-way binding uh, when you're using Mobix, and you should, you should adopt this flux way of thinking of this, I, as a component, I get data from the, from the state, from the store, present it, and then I take an uh, event from the user, call an action, and that's it. Like, the only difference is that calling an action is just calling a function, not firing an action, dispatching an action, and using a value is just using the value and not doing selectors and stuff like that.